welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I have something so fun for you. It is a Pinterest nail it or fail it. I saw this picture and I will insert it here. On Pinterest. So the, the picture is from Pinterest. Uh, she's an Etsy seller. I'm going to try to remember to link her shop down below. But she created this pumpkin that I want to recreate. So I bought some materials. This is not strictly a Dollar Tree, but you could do it strictly Dollar Tree. So what we have, I'm going to show you my supplies and what I'm going to do. What we're going to do. Um, to make it Dollar Tree... You'll need one of these thankful and blessed or one of the pumpkins, any size pumpkin. Um, take off the string, the metal and the, the metal, sorry, I have a lot of sunshine this morning, the metal leaves and all the things. And then you can take a, um, what are those spatulas called? Like for when you're scraper and scrape off the glitter, sand it off. I actually bought these for a different project, which I will have coming up, but. I'm going to take my belt sander and, or palm sander and get rid of all of the glitter because I don't like the texture that it leaves behind. But I digress. So you need a pumpkin. Then, hold on, I dropped it. Hold on, I dropped it. You'll want a smaller pumpkin. Um, if you're doing a Dollar Tree version, now you're not going to attach it. I'm just using it to outline. Or you could freehand the smaller pumpkin um, if you're doing this size. I went to Hobby Lobby and picked up a pumpkin this size because I want mine big. Um, I'm hanging this probably in my bathroom over the toilet because, you know, it's fall, y'all, um, for my Halloween's giving. And so I wanted a bigger size. It's much bigger. This was... $4.99. So it was regularly $9.99. It was 40% off. So $5.99. I paid for this. And I just painted it white with white chalk paint to get started. And then I used this to trace my pump. Oh, too much sun. To trace my pumpkin on the inside right here. And that'll be painted orange. And this will be painted gray and white striped. So those are some of the materials. And you could get, like I said, the, this size at the Dollar Tree. So, and then you'll need ribbons to make your bow. I'll show you what I got where. At the Dollar Tree, I picked up these three ribbons. And this is brown with gold leaves. This is orange chevron and pumpkin. And they had other ones. And you can use any size bow that you want. But these are the ones I got at the Dollar Tree. But I wanted more. So at Joanne, I picked up this gold threaded plaid. I had that from last year, and those are um, owls. And this year, I got this with pumpkins. And then I picked up this burlap, but I didn't end up using it for this project. And I cut them all. Then, you'll need some painter's tape. Or a ruler, you can freehand it, but I need paint. I'm using painter's tape. I used a screwdriver to pry off the, the leaf. You'll want some scissors to cut your ribbon, some pencils to help with that, with your pumpkin. Um, I've been using these handy white thingies. They're called, I'm going to my mom's. They're called personal cleaning cloths. They're fragrance free. They're really large, bigger than a um, diaper wipe, but anything will work just for your hands because you're going to be painting. And then I created my bows, and this is the small bow that's going to go on the little pumpkin, and I can show you how I do that at the end. Um, I just Googled it, on, or YouTubed it, and then I have this one, which I kind of left open because I want to be able to see the top of the um, pumpkin stems. That's all the supplies that you, oh, and paint. Um, depending on the colors or stripes that you want, I want gray and white because I'm going to try to do to recreate this exactly like she did almost. I'm going to add one little highlight that she didn't have 
Um, between the gray and white stripes, I'm going to do a gold because I wanted some gold. And I'm going to outline the pumpkin, this guy here, in gold after I paint it. So that's the only thing I'm doing different. And what I have for that, and I have another one somewhere, I just don't know what I did with it, is a paint pen. A gold paint pen. So that's it. So hang tight. I need to wait for the sun to move because it's annoying on my desk. But I will start taping this off. So when I come back, you'll be able to see it. Now that the sun has moved on, I'm in a better place to paint. And I have some coffee. This is vanilla creme brulee. Mm, so good. Um, while I was waving, I ran some errands and I went to TJ Maxx and got my first pumpkin spice coffee of the season. It's a really good place in, to buy um, coffee. All right, so we're here. I was going to use the tape, but the tape is too wide, so I'm just drawing lines with my ruler. So I made sure the first one was really straight. And then I'm just taking a pencil and lightly drawing the lines. Because you wanted to hear that. Oh, and I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. If you saw on the picture, and I'll post the picture again at the end, there's some like hay looking things. I couldn't find hay, but I found that. So, oh, well that'll be white. This little corner right here will be white. And let me just make sure this line is accurate. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, I also need a smaller paintbrush to do some details. I have tons of paintbrushes. I got these in a bag at Walmart. I love these. And I've seen them at other stores. But these are really a good paintbrush. They hold up to washing pretty well. Not have any issues with them. I really like it. I like we got the stripes in which makes me very happy um, I will say that it was a little tedious to paint them in, but I got it done. That's orange on there, thank goodness. So next what we're going to paint is the pumpkin itself. And then I'll do the two um, stems. So first I'm gonna paint it orange. And then I'm gonna go back in with some brown to kind of give it some texture and some age to it and depth. So I'll just start edging freehand again. Um, the other option that I think would work for this if you're not comfortable painting freehand is to buy a wooden cutout of a pumpkin and paint it and glue it on. Totally would work just fine. And I'm not even sure what the picture if that's not what the person did. I'm just guessing that it was painted on. Um, this orange paint is Cracker Barrel. No, that's a restaurant. Apple Barrel Spiced Carrot. And I can tell already it's gonna take two coats. This is acrylic paint. It's not a chalk paint. Um, chalk paint definitely goes on thicker. But that's it. That's all I'm going to do is get this orange down. Um, I won't do the details unless I'm videoing. Just And by details, I mean where I'm going to add a little bit of brown and kind of do the shape of the pumpkin um, to give a little bit of an outline as well. But what we do need to make sure happens is that I get the edging down first. So that um, when I go back, I can do the second coat fairly quicker. I won't have to get as close to the edge 
with the second coat and I'll do the brown coat obviously in between. And if you are hand painting, just go real slow. And the second coat of paint, I may even add just a little bit of brown to it. Um, to, and I'm gonna switch now to a larger paintbrush. Now that I have the detailing done for a couple reasons, faster obviously, but brush strokes. Little paint brushes will leave, you know, more paint strokes where a larger one will not. And I'm just gonna go over this edge here. All right, let me get this pumpkin painted orange and I will come back. We got it all painted up. And I realized I really would have liked to have that pumpkin stem go the other direction, but that's just me and my silly crazy mind. All right, so this is wet. I put the second coat of orange paint pretty heavy on here. Um, it's going to take some time to dry, but if you're wanting to blend a couple colors together, you really want your paint to be wet. If it's too dry, it'll just mess up. Now I'm just going, oh, you can't see my paint here. I'm going to dip a little tiny bit into the brown and then back to the orange and kind of dry it off a little bit because honestly I just really want to do some just some like rounded swishies I don't know what these are called there's a name for it I'm sure but what it is I don't know but I'm just trying my darndest to do some highlighting here with brown and orange and then I can go back into the orange and kind of just go back over it but I want more orange than I want brown at this point to just kind of blend it in together and that's it I mean that's how we are going to highlight this pumpkin underneath and I'll let it dry and then I may if it's too dark once it's dry I'll go back over with some orange paint but let me show you what it looks like so far that little pumpkin down here I just wanted to give it some texture and I might go back over it with other colors but what I'm gonna do right this second while that orange is drying is we're going to draw on our lines. I don't know if I want to use a ruler or not. Let's try to do it free handing it. So right here, I went over that. You see where I did the gold? I don't know if I like this gold. I'm gonna try the Sharpie gold. Uh, just a better brand, I guess. Although I don't know if it's a better brand. But it's also a thinner marker and that will make me happy so I'm just opening it I need to shake 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 it and then you take a plate or a piece of paper and this is oil based paint just so you know So it will stay. This is also what you would use if you wanted to draw on like a magic on a um, like a mug of some sort. There we go. Yeah, that definitely looks a little darker than the other gold. So what we're gonna do is I honestly just want to draw a straight line. There we go. Yeah, that's darker. Let me see if I can show you what I'm doing up here. I'm not sure if you'll see it. Let me get this whole one done. But I feel like this is going to be twofold. It's going to clean up this edge between the two layers. And it's going to bring a little gold to it, which I want. You see that up here? 
so I'm just going to very carefully draw gold lines across and like since everything is kind of wet still I'm just going to be super careful because what I don't want to do is get my hand in the gold or in any of the wet paint and I'm probably going to outline this pumpkin as well and then I'm going to come back with some probably um, a little bit of gold paint and just touch up these highlights with some gold. I'll show you that when I get back. But right now I'm just gonna outline everything in gold. The last thing I'm gonna do, I've got everything painted and outlined in gold, is I'm gonna do a little sparkly of gold in the pumpkin itself, just to give it a little sparkle because that's how I roll mm, not that brush let's do this brush but we're just kind of going in the highlighted areas just in the shadowing with the gold nothing of any importance and I'm not doing the whole thing and this will it's not glitter it's more like a metallic paint but if you wanted to do glitter, you certainly could. So I'm, that's it. I just took a little bit of this gold and when it dries, it will not look as sparkly. And then the last thing we're going to do is let this dry completely. And then I'm going to come back in and seal it. And I'm probably going to seal it with a spray paint because I think the brushing of it is going to end up um, smearing the paint. And I don't want that to happen. So far, here's where we're at. I just need to let this thing dry for quite some time. I would say at least an hour. And then I'll take it outside and just spray some shellac over it. And I'll bring you along for that. All right, everything is all dry. I'm just gonna give it a quick seal with this Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Clear. Actually, I'll probably give it a couple coats. Alrighty, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come out and give it one more coat. Now everything is dry. I've got my bows made. I couldn't find a little like straw hay stuff. So at the Dollar Tree, I found some of this greenery. But I don't know that I like it on here. So I think I'm going to go without it. Um. Maybe if I find some better equipped hay type stuff that I can attach it. So what I'm just going to do is put this bow, these bows on because this stuff just isn't exactly what the Etsy shop used. I'm not sure what she used. She probably got it at a floral shop or somewhere. But... And I don't know if these bows are too small, but for right now, we're going to leave them. I may decide to make a larger bow. Oh, we got to get these. I think we're okay now. Okay. We got to get these straightened out. But for now, these are the bows that I have to work with. So what I'm going to do is we're going to glue these down. But I want to make sure this is all glued together. It doesn't have to be super, super glued on because it's just a bow. But we'll put enough glue. But it's hot glue, so if I want to take it off, I certainly can. 
this is what we have so far. These are my bows. I think it's a, I, I think it's a good representation um, of what I saw on Pinterest, but I'll let you decide if this was a nailed it or failed it. Um, but what I'm going to do is take it downstairs, put it on my mantle, and get a better picture of it for you. But yeah, this was, that was a little time consuming, just allowing the paint to dry, but it really was not a difficult project. Um, but I definitely might go with some larger ribbons or larger bows, but we'll see. For now, this is it. And I hope you enjoyed. Uh, give me a minute and I will take you downstairs. Gotta unplug everything too. All right, here we go. Not in the mantle, it's on a little table. But that is my rendition of the Pinterest pumpkins. Yeah, I definitely think I want bigger bows, but we'll see. I love it. It could lean, it could stand, it can hang. I need to put some hangers on the back, but that is it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one. Bye.